Agatha is the gayest Marvel project yet. Do you agree? I it better be because that's what I that's what I signed up for. I'm frankly into it. Hello, future grader here, actually. Uh, past grader did this video before he watched the two episodes of Agatha. And while my opinion hasn't really changed on, you know, the viewership numbers of this show, I do have to say that the first two episodes after watching, I mean, it's kind of crazy because this is probably the most competently well-made show since, what, Loki season two? And I know most MCU fans haven't even watched Loki season two. So in reality, for most MCU fans or the casuals, this is probably the most competent show since WandaVision or Loki season one, which is pretty insane. Anyway, going to past grader now. Oh yeah, baby, the MCU is so back. And in a way, and in order to stay on brand with the franchise that we're discussing today, there's actually some multiverse out there where I could actually be saying that statement somewhat unironically. Let me explain. Well, not the multiverse part. That was all just a fake scenario. But first, I should probably get this out of the way because I think my personal outlook on the Hollywood landscape that I mostly refer to as a desolate wasteland of creativity is pretty important when it comes to the context and nuance of the opinion that I'm going to be laying out today. And while some of you might think that I will just be rescinding that analogy or banning it to the Shadow Realm until further notice, don't go having an aneurysm on me. The analogy of a desolate wasteland of creativity is not the problem that I'm referring to. Definitely not. But more of a problem that both sides of the coin in this cash drawer are guilty of, meaning the audience and the studios that are involved in regards to the outlook and the expectations of certain projects. And because of that, as well as in a time in our Hollywood history where it seems as if the multitude of crippling decisions post-pandemic, head-scratching pivots and directions when it comes to some of our most generational IPs, childish he said, she said that have actually led to real media attacks of certain fandoms or, even worse, outright slurs and derogatory name-calling types of people that they classify the fandom as. As well as an equal amount of childish retaliation, but last but not least, the blatant lack of creativity in regards to quality product on either the big or small screen is becoming more and more of a mainstream talking point as the flops, failures, and excuses start to terrorize more and more fandoms like the Borderlands movie or say, Velma Season 2. Yeah, you probably didn't even know that that came out this year without all of the hate watching and the video essays damning the series to oblivion. Out of sight, out of mind, I guess, even for the imaginary audience that it was created for. And while some can definitely see that last point as a low blow, well, actually not really. That show and concept as a whole was just a blatant slap in the face and an attack on creatives as a whole. But that is what I am getting at in all of this. Even to the casual audience, it has become relatively obvious that Hollywood, the people in charge, and the people employed to write their stories have no idea what the audience is looking for and what the audience wants when it comes to their entertainment. But the answer to that question that was never even a question because the answer was always just in front of everybody's faces was just the same old good old fashioned escapism. But the point of this entire soliloquy is that not every piece of media is a T-Rex sized mountain pile of dog shit in our 2024 Hollywood filler art and how the outlook of the audience can really make or break some of these ideas and there's really no perfect example of this dilemma that our wrecked audience to studio relationship is facing right now than Disney's latest failed melodrama that turned fan drama The Acolyte. A show that could never really hit the ground running due to the uphill battle the production was facing pretty much post-announcement over four years ago. And while I will definitely not be getting into that pile of shit on a screen that tried its best to masquerade itself as a quality weekly viewing experience, in a different time, under different management, and under a less divided Hollywood audience. There is a world where the idea and the concept of the Akala as a whole blooms. It's all about the context and the outlook of it all, baby. And Agatha all along finds itself directly sitting across and in the same exact boat as the Acolyte, staring into the abyss of what pretty much seems like impossible success. And while it might not seem like the Marvel brand or franchise as a whole has built up the same amount of fan apathy or toxic fandom division as say Lucasfilm or Disney Star Wars, and in a way, that is true. And rather that's because of the overwhelming and pre-established well of good faith that the MCU has built up within its fan base with the Spider-Man movies or the Guardians movies or just member berries of the yesteryears of the Infinity Saga. 
the greatest cinematic achievement of all time. I'm never going to let that go. Or it could just be simple blind faith of what once was could always just be returned and revived. Whatever the case may be, the fact of the matter is when you as an audience member actually take a step back and take a look at the entire landscape of the MCU as a whole and their obvious mismanagement of projects, timelines, expectations, and direction as a team, is it too late for a show like Agatha Coven of Chaos to survive? Getting back to the outlook in the context of the show overall, and now including the entire landscape of the MCU, its direction now, and its past mistakes, it's unfortunate because I do genuinely believe not only is there a niche market of the target audience out there that Agatha Harkness is pandering towards, but an actual real-life audience that Marvel is, and will continue to miss out on, due to the mishandlings of certain themes in the earlier stages of the multiverse saga. We as an audience, especially a fanbase as diverse and saturated as the MCU fandom, does not always need a world-ending CGI fuckfest multiverse story, and honestly, I think that the general audience is getting pretty tired of that idea overall. It's been a complaint that I have seen many times before, and trust me, this will not be the last time you hear it. I mean, the Spider-Man fandom is going through it right now with the daily leaks of Spider-Man 4 either being told as a multiversal story or getting back to the basics of the character of his core and having a more grounded street level adventure. But in the specific case with Agatha, I believe a more centralized character driven comedy themed and shrouded around one of the most popular holidays here in the West headed by an actual fan favorite character in regards to the female audience members that actually has some charm and charisma behind the camera, not to mention the addition of one of the best B but should be A-list actresses in the game right now in Aubrey Plaza. If this idea, this story, keep everyone and everything intact but is say released as a holiday special in the midst of Phase 2, I won't even go as far as Phase 3, we and Marvel would have a hit on our hands. Maybe. The outlook and the expectations of the show overall would be a completely different ballgame, and as I mentioned, in a different time but even under the same management and team, a show like Agatha Darkhold Diaries would be looked at as a fresh breath of fresh air as we as the audience take a step back, sit down, and relax with our best gal pal and watch some witch shenanigans. And in reality, I could get down with that. <laughs> but will the rest of the MCU fandom? That is the real question. Has the past couple of years of the incompetent decision making, embarrassing flops, reoccurring disappointments, scandals off the field, poorly placed marketing, terrible interview sound bites, nonsensical writing, Toontown character writing, and lack of a cohesive direction and narrative in the multiverse saga come back to bite Marvel in the ass in a time where Marvel's newest little sis of a show is releasing to the public? <laughs> and I guess the simple answer to that question is yes, but the most unfortunate part is that I don't believe that had to be the case. And no, this isn't a think piece or an attack on the audience because only Marvel, Kevin Feige, and Disney are left to blame with the deck of cards that are still left in their hand, to the point where the almighty spear bomb has been called upon to retain some of that aforementioned good faith with the return of Robert Downey Jr. into the franchise. My point is that I don't think Agatha all along is going to be nearly as bad as some of the latest MCU Disney Plus shows and entries such as Echo, Secret Invasion, or even She-Hulk, and while that is definitely not a high bar to achieve in regards to quality, competence, and simple entertainment value, it's just unfortunate that because of the poor timing, hubris, and the fact that the majority of the higher-ups of the MCU had their heads shoved so far up their own asses after the success of the Infinity Saga, that we as an audience are in a position today where, well, I might think that the MCU actually could have a fun, lighthearted, and most importantly, quality product on their hands that most of the audience members can enjoy if they go into the show with the right mindset, outlook, and hopefully a partner to view it with on these chilly nights here on the coast that the MCU franchise and brand as a whole could actually be entering into territories and levels of Disney Star Wars fan apathy. And as we just saw with The Acolyte and everything that has surrounded that show from announcement to eventual cancellation, it is not a good look for your franchise when the fan base simply doesn't care. But what are you gonna do? This will more than likely be the last time I even talk about this show until it's over, seeing how we're just now getting out of the dead time that was early September. So... I guess I'll just see you guys around Halloween to talk some Agatha for name changes. Prayers up, baby. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go check that out. 
Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Oh, we did see Agatha's ass. That was kind of crazy. Anyway, bye.